Welcome back. As always, we have a lot to talk about. Producer price index was released late last week. We also have to talk about the Fed probability score as it stands right now and talk of a Federal Reserve possible interest rate cut. Producer price index uh, was released at 0.8% versus 0.2. That's the uh, standard PPI uh, cost of, of goods on the producer level, the wholesale level. For PPI, 2.4% inline core is excluding food and energy, which are more volatile components of uh, the index. So excluding food and energy inline, but including food and energy, uh, prices are actually going up. Concerning Fed probability score, we're going to tackle in just a moment. First off, we see here the yellow line, producer price index. This is on a year-over-year basis. This is the cost of goods at the wholesale level. Now, as prices go down, we think that on the wholesale level, we're, we assume that it will those savings will be passed on to the consumer level. We're going to see in a second that's actually not the case. Here we see the red line is the core PPI excluding food and energy. So excluding food and energy, the costs are still higher. What's troubling, though, is that the PPI, the yellow line, including food and energy, that was weak. And we thought, hey, this is a good reason in Federal Reserve not to raise interest rates again. Well, maybe not so fast. Uh, the first tick up in quite a while, and uh, this could be the start of a new trend. We see here the core CPI is uh, in white. That's year over year. That's for consumer price index. Uh, that's what the consumers pay for core CPI, excluding food and energy. So everything else, apparel, uh, you know, normal everyday goods and basket of, of services and goods type of thing. But including food and energy, uh, we see the red line. So the white line is above the red line, indicating consumers are paying more for the things not included with food and energy. Now the PPI, core PPI is green. That is the producer level. That's what the producers, the wholesalers are paying for excluding food and energy, books and apparel, all those other kinds of things. The yellow line is PPI year over year, including food and energy. That's the weakest. Now that has started to tick up. But what's interesting is notice that the white line is above the core CPI is above the green line, core PPI, that the consumers are Excluding food and energy are paying more than the, uh, the the consumers are paying more than the producers. We think, or we'd like to think, that as prices go up for the wholesalers, they pass on those extra costs of the consumers. But when prices go down for the wholesalers, they pass on the savings to the consumers. Not so much the case. It's kind of like when prices of oil uh, goes up, gasoline prices go up. But when the price of oil goes down, how come gasoline doesn't really go down? Maybe we're kind of seeing that right now. The yellow line PPI is the overall uh, number for producer price index. That's lower than the consumer price index. So including all those different things found in that general basket of goods and services measured, the red lines above the yellow, the consumers are paying more than producers. Now, here we see the white area chart is a federal funds rate. Uh, we were at four, per, I'm sorry, a little over 2% uh, in 2019. It was cut down to 0.25%, nearly zero. And then, of course, we see this massive uh, rate interest rate hike cycle that we're experiencing right now. The yellow line is the producer price index year over year. The red line is the consumer price index year over year. And notice what happened. We see here May, June through September, the yellow line crossed above the red line. The cost of the producers went up, and then the producers passed on those costs to the consumers. See how the yellow line went up first, then the red line? Well, now the yellow line went down. The producer price index went down, and then the consumer price index went down. So is this a delayed reaction? Or is the consumer price index destined to follow? Notice how they're both kind of ticking to the upside, though. Leads us to believe that maybe the consumer price index isn't going to come down any further. Maybe if they both, if one goes up, the other will go up. Uh, Now, what's also interesting is that inflation really reared its ugly head. Uh, January, February of 22, before the Federal Reserve started to raise interest rates, we have a 2% Federal Reserve inflation target over here. 
How come when the consumer and the producer price index crossed above 2%, the Federal Reserve didn't raise interest rates January of 2021. They didn't raise interest rates until a year and a quarter later when inflation already had kind of topped out. Was the Federal Reserve a little late? Left to be seen. This is a very interesting chart, though, and I don't know that we have an explanation. If you have one, please do let us know. The red line is the producer price index minus the consumer price index. This shows us how much more the producer is paying than the consumer. When the red line goes up, it means the producers, relatively speaking, are paying more than the consumers. When the red line goes down, and we can see on the left-hand side, that's positive and negative territory. So when it's above zero, it means the producer's paying more. When the red line's below zero, it means the producer's paying less. The white line is the S&P 500. This is the question. Why do you think there's such an amazing correlation between the two? Why is it that the S&P 500 it's actually a two-part question. Part number one, why is there such an amazing correlation that when stocks go up, that means that producers are paying more than the consumers? Question number two, or part two, why did this correlation break apart September of 22? Really, actually, around June, May, June, July of 2022, about a year ago. Actually, I have a theory about that. We always talk about June of last year. Uh, but now as the S&P 500 goes back to the upside. Now, again, understand that when the red line goes up, it means the producers are paying more than the consumers. It means the consumers are getting a good deal. The price of lumber is going up, but yet we can still buy lumber relatively inexpensively in the store. Lumber as an example, anything. But when the red line goes down, it means all of a sudden, either the price for the producers is going down and they're not cutting prices at the checkout counter, or just prices are going up for the consumer, regardless. That's what we're experiencing right now. This red line is dropping. This red line dropping below zero means that things got very expensive for the consumer. Relatively speaking, more expensive for the consumer than the producer. When the red line is below zero, it means that PPI minus CPI is negative, meaning that CPI is more than PPI. When it's zero, it means well, everything's kind of fair. What the producers are paying, the consumers are paying. June of last year, we had the beginning of the inverted bond market. I think that many years into the future, we're going to be talking about June of 2022 and how that was the beginning of the inverted bond market and it really kind of dislodged a lot of charts and a lot of economic numbers. Really funny how this correlation broke apart as the beginning of the inverted bond market. Interesting indeed. Here we see the red line represents the probability that the Federal Reserve will keep rates where they are right now at the 525 to 550 level, meaning no interest rate hike. The blue line represents the chances that the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates to 550 to 575. Again, right now we're 525 to 550. Well, at the bottom, we can see a number of different economic numbers that were released and how the probabilities of these interest rate decisions kind of shift according to these numbers. Last, uh, a week ago, Friday, about a week and a half ago, uh, the non-farm payroll employment number was released. So it was a little soft. The probability the Federal Reserve would keep interest rates where they are from 82 went up to 87%. Wholesale inventories didn't really affect the market last week. Consumer price index was released mid last week. And then that moved up to the 90% level, 90% chance the Federal Reserve will not raise interest rates. Well, now the PPI was released last Friday and that dropped down to 88.5. Now it's not a huge move. We're still very much in the camp that the Federal Reserve will not raise interest rates. But very interesting, that probably moved down just a little bit. The blue line at the bottom shows us we went from 10 to 11.5% chance of an interest rate hike. And that just shows us that if the inflation numbers are strong and or employment numbers are weak, the probabilities are the Federal Reserve may raise interest rates. The Federal Reserve wants to keep interest rates down and keep employment up. When employment gets soft, that means maybe they have to you know, stop raising interest rates. 
But when the inflation rears its ugly head, they may have to continue to raise interest rates. Now, this is from Yahoo Finance, although the article was published everywhere. Goldman Sachs pencils in the first interest rate Federal Reserve cut for the second quarter of 2024. Now, they don't know, of course. But it says here, Goldman Sachs economists anticipate the Federal Reserve will start lowering interest rates by the end of next June with gradual quarterly pace of reductions from that point. Now, it's originally from a Bloomberg article. Is Goldman Sachs right? Well, the answer, I believe, is always uh, found in the bond market. This is where the current 10-year bond in the blue line and the one-year bond in the red line stands. Uh, and the histogram bar in the background shows us to the rate of inversion. The blue line is right above 4%. The red line, the one year is in 525, 530 in that area, maybe a little higher. And uh, when the one year, the short-term bond is above the blue line, the 10-year, the long-term bond, that's an inverted bond market. Now, the reason we mention that is because if we expect an interest rate cut, we know the short-term bond, the red line, will move first. They're more reactive. Short-term bond yields are more reactive than long-term bond yields. If we expect interest rate cuts and we want to, and we expect the one year to move first, we would logically expect it to go down. So the question is, when will the one year go down? When will it cross below the 10-year? Well, we can look back in history and we can see that this was uh, 2007. Now, we know 2006, uh, all the way through April of 07, we know that the economy was very strong and interest rates were very high. And we can look back historically and see exactly when the Federal Reserve started to cut rates in the 07, 08 you know, era. But take a look at the one-month bond. The one-month bond was far above. That's the one, uh, that's the one, uh, the, the white line, the one-month treasury note, I should say was far, far higher than the red line, which is the one-year, the five-year, or the 10-year. Then we saw the collapse of the one-month. Now, we mentioned the one-month because the one-month is even more reactive than the one-year. So the answer is, is Goldman Sachs right? Well, the bond market's going to tell us. And this happened, you know, months, months before the Federal Reserve actually embarked on interest rate cuts. But the answer to the question, is Goldman Sachs right? Well, we won't, we won't know until we're there. But the market will tell us when the market believes the Federal Reserve is really getting close to cutting interest rates, maybe six months or a year before, maybe sooner. We'll watch the one-month bond and the one-year bond. And again, so far, the one-year bond is not telling us any kind of story about interest rate cuts. We still have 130% or so inversion. So the bond market right now is not forecasting interest rate cuts. Goldman Sachs economists may be right. That's a long way off. That's almost a year away. Uh, but we're going to watch the bond market very closely to see if Goldman Sachs is right on that. We have a big economic calendar ahead of us, and uh, we'll be certain to uh, report back on any significant developments. And I'd also like to mention we've had some fantastic comments and suggestions. We truly, truly appreciate it. It's given us some great ideas. Uh, we're not ignoring you. Uh, we're really going to uh, talk about a lot of the ideas that were mentioned in the comments, uh, including uh, the velocity of money, uh, M2, and a lot of other great things. It's very, very interesting uh, topic uh, among many. So uh, we're certainly going to get to those uh, in the very, very near future. We thank you for joining us. We look forward to seeing you back soon.